we eventually we moved into a house, right? When we found a house that fulfilled all of those very picky requirements that you just mentioned, right? And we moved into the place. Now, here's the weird thing, genuinely the weirdest thing I've had as a 36-year-old man, the first time I've ever known my neighbours, right? This will happen to you. When you're in your 20s and you move house year after year after year after year after year, particularly because you, you know, do those dodgy wiring and you keep having to move on <laughs> in case people find you, right? You don't, get, you don't bother to know your neighbours, you don't bother your arse, you know, because you think you're going to be there for a year, they're going to be there for a year, who, who cares, right? I moved into this place, suddenly neighbours came around. In a, re, like, in a kind of a ding-dong, here's a pot of plant, here's a bottle of wine, let it die, drink it, knock yourself out, right? <laughs> like, into the area, right? In a way that I found, like, just disorientatingly friendly, and I go, what, what, oh yeah, thanks, hi, yeah. Like, I've never, I've never had that before. The only, luckily for me in my cynical nature, there was one nice kind of weird thing about it, right? We know these people and 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 these people, right? We know nobody from the other side of the road. <laughs> None of them have come over and said hello. In a real, and like, I, I live in an ordinary residential area. It's not like they're going to go, well, we'd go, love to go over and say hello, but we might get hit by the monorail uh, at some <laughs> stage. And in fact, we went out with all these people. There were drinks, and we all met up with everyone. And, and I got like slightly tipsy and, and mischievous, sort of going, does, "Does anyone know anyone on the other side of the road?" And they're all going, "No, I don't know anyone." Like, no one knew anyone on the other side of the road. So I wanted to get a posse together where we'd march across to one house just <laughs> randomly, right, and just ring a doorbell until they came out and said, "Hey, what the fuck? You're not good enough here. Are we not? Are we not good enough here? <laughs> yes. Are we not good enough? Yes. Stuck up, even numbered pricks." <laughs> and I walk away. <laughs> But now that I know the neighbours, you kind of feel, OK, first time in my life, should I get involved at a local level? Should I get involved in the community? Because I'm of a generation that doesn't really do community. We do communities in a MySpace, Bebo, that kind of community, you know what I mean? Facebook, perfect example. Facebook, for those of you who don't have it, is like having a butler. <laughs> Previously, my friends would email me. Now they email Facebook, and Facebook emails me. <laughs> it's like he walks in with a tray and goes, John has sent you a letter. And I go, not now, Facebook. I do not wish to hear from John now. <laughs> But actual community? I don't know how that works. My parents did it for years in Ireland. There was, nothing happened in the town I grew up that my parents didn't know about, you know? But that was all parish stuff. And I can't do parish stuff because I'm an atheist, right? And we're not popular on parish committees. <laughs> we have a tendency to produce short but very popular nativity plays, <laughs> where just a child walks out and goes, there is no God, uh, and they walk out. <laughs> and, they, and they get tense about that on the parish committee. But, but generally, I don't even know what parish I'm in, because fucking who knows what parish you're in, you know? Like, unless you catch the priest marking out his territory by, you know, <laughs> spraying onto a wall. Uh, and <laughs> then other priests smell it and go, oh, Jesus, no, O'Connell's, and they back away. Uh, and <laughs> that's the joke I don't do in Ireland, by the way. Uh, that's still... <laughs> that's actually weird enough. I tried it a few times in Ireland, but they just didn't. Even though we're not as big into priests as we used to be, there was still a reaction to me saying that priests use their smell glands to mark out the parameters of a parish. They thought that was a bit much, you know. Mm, sorry. And they do. In my area, they're feral. It's ridiculous. You can't get them out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I caught one at the bins the other night. They, I pulled the car into the driveway, and in the headlights, the priest was there, and he went, <laughs> like that. Uh, and then he hopped through the garden, and it was amazing. But actual community stuff, I don't know how that works. I don't know, I, I feel, you know, emotionally retired of it. I don't know how that works. I don't even know what the organisations are in this country. What is the big one in the area? What are the big kind of neighbourhood kind of organisations? Neighbourhood Watch. Neighbourhood Watch. I mean, like, I mean Neighbourhood Watch has been around as long as I've been alive, right? What in the name of Christ is Neighbourhood Watch? <laughs> is it just a sticker? Is that all it is? <laughs> You just put up the sticker and like vampires, burglars are repelled magically by the sight of the sticker. Or do you get like a gun or a stick or a taser or some sort of, you know, walkie-talkie where you go, Jesus, Mick, there's someone in your garden. There's someone in your garden. No, relax, it's only a priest. It's okay, it's only a priest. <laughs> no, sorry, don't we? Oh, what do you do? Oh, this time of year, they're terrible. Spray them with the hose. That's the only thing I can write. <laughs> Spray them with the hose. It's the only language they understand, apart from Latin. They also understand Latin. <laughs> And is it just watching? That seems like more of an insult than anything else. If you come back after your holidays and your neighbour goes, Jesus, I wouldn't go in there. <laughs> you go, well, why? Oh, should they took everything. <laughs> There's nothing left in there. How do you know? Well, should we watch this? They pulled a van up to the door and they took it all out. It was incredible to watch. It really was. It was thorough. They couldn't get into the attic. I lent them a ladder. I'll not see that again. <laughs> Or are you supposed to get involved, just to pitch in, like, whatever? And I've asked this question, all, like, in every gig I've asked, I'll ask it again. Has anyone here ever interrupted a crime? Yeah. You did. Ah, uh, hang on, fucking Mr. Fucking I hate the Irish man at the start here. Right? <laughs> what, what was the crime, my friend? A dude has two doors from me, the fella stole a ring, 
There's, there's a guy two doors down for you who stole the ring. Yes, and I chased him up the street. You chased him up the street? How, first, first, whoa, let's rewind here for a second, right? How do, I don't know, you, you can put the hand down, by the way. Uh, it's, it's not a classroom situation, right? It's good to have you here, but you can, you can look. No, hang on, now we're both doing it. Now you've started me doing it. Yeah, let's just, right, for a second, right down. No, fucking stop. Right, right, fuck, 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 down. Right, both of us. Now, there's a guy two doors up from you, stole a ring. I presume he doesn't live two doors up. He went into the house two doors up from you. There's a jeweler's two doors up from There's me. a jeweler's two doors up from you. Well, he would naturally have rings. That'd be a bit harsh if he went, what the fuck are you doing with all the rings? I'm a jeweler. <laughs> okay, there was a fellow that wasn't a jeweler, right? Went into the jeweler's. Went into the jeweler's. He took a ring that wasn't his. That wasn't his. Now you're right. That actually is almost a dictionary definition of ring theft. <laughs> uh, right there. It couldn't be better expressed that. A man went into a jeweler's who wasn't himself a jeweler, therefore had no right to take that, wasn't buying it as a gift, had an exchange money for it, took a ring that wasn't his, right? Now, where, where were you during this? Were you in the jeweler's? No, I was in my shop. You were in your shop, right? And what's the, what, is, what kind of shop is your shop? Uh, <laughs> it's a laughing shop! <laughs> You sell waves. Is that what you do, uh, Scott? <laughs> you're not going to tell me what your shop is, eh? Actually, I fix shoes as well. You fix shoes as well? Yeah. For me. Nothing for, to do with him. Really? It's like, oh, you're like a little posse. Yeah, I'll assume you're right. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, you see the guy nicking the... Oh, you hear the, the commotion of somebody stealing a ring? Yes, yeah, right. My friend who owns the journalist, he... Uh, like that. Like Come that. <laughs> what, did he want to call forth the animals of the world? <laughs> uh, so, uh, off on the African plains, elephants go, mm. and then they their head off. Tarzan the jeweler has been robbed. We shall go there. Oh! So the cobbler ran after the thief, yes. going, My shoes are better than his. Uh, his shoes will give out at some stage, but the excellent leather uppers of mine will keep me running for many hours. How long, by the way, did you keep running for? Well, uh, it, was, it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long? Okay. Yeah, is that from here to here, like, or is it like... Not as far as that. Not even as far as that? Hang on, were you there for this? Yeah. What, and what the fuck did you run after? You're younger than he is, for fuck's sake. I ran after him. You ran after him? That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> what, with a spare pair of shoes? Here, here, try these, these are faster. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so now there's a jewellery thief being followed by two cobblers. <laughs> you should have brought the guy out with a fucking hammer. That would have scared the shit out of the jewellery thing. <laughs> Just advancing like Pac-Man down the road. <laughs> did you catch him? Yes. Yeah. You did? What did you do to him? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at that bit. <laughs> that sounds fucking sinister when you go, what did we do to him? Uh, <laughs> Back to the you brought him back to the jeweler. Yeah. Did you make him give back the ring? No, he ran away again. He ran away again. <laughs> you were going to tell me that bit of the story, were you? You're going to keep that quiet. The guy ran away, got away. We got him again. We caught him again. Though. You caught, you ran after him again. <laughs> what, like a cat with a mouse? Were you just kind of okay? We'll give you a head start. Now we're after you again. What's huh? <laughs> fucking running after me? Here you can go again. Now we've got you again. How often did you run and catch him and run? Only twice. At only twice. And then did he get done for it? Yeah. He did. Yeah. Well, well done. Well done. The cobbler, ladies and gentlemen. The cobbler. Protecting the city against crime. Hi, this is Dara Breen. This is my YouTube channel, so subscribe and like to get more funny clips.